Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. In this video, we're going to do a break-in analysis of a flat tappet cam that came out of the last 440 I built. Had to take the cam out because the block had a crack in it and I have to rebuild the engine. So what we're going to do is take a look at how well it broke in and if it's usable, if it's still usable. And we're going to look at the lifters and the cam lobes to match them up to see how well they broke in and how evenly it broke in. And what could have affected the break in. We're going to look at that. Now as this sits here right now, the lifters are lined up with the lobes on the cam that they would have been in the engine. You always have to keep them in order when you take them out, especially flat tap a cam. And these are, this is cylinder 1357-2468 and it's exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, same thing down here, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. So we're going to see if there's a difference between the intake and exhaust, how they broke in, what they look like, and answer some questions. Now when I installed this camshaft in the video, here's a, a card for the video if you want to watch the video. Um, when I installed this, I made a statement and I said that when you put a flat tappet cam in your engine, you're taking a 50-50 shot whether or not it's going to break in and last a long time. And one of the most common questions, and it's understandable, or I shouldn't say question, statement uh, people made on that video was that flat tappet cams have been built for decades, going back for a long time. Why is it only a 50-50 shot with this particular engine? Why did I say that? Now back in the 60s, even any time any of these 440s were built with cast iron heads, the spring seat pressure that the lifter would see on the camshaft would be roughly 128 installed pressure up to maybe 280. So for a standard factory engine, the spring seat pressure or how much pressure is being pushed on the lifter against the cam lobe was fairly low. That is why engines from the factory had a great success rate with uh, flat tappet cams. That's why they lasted so long. The spring seat pressure was so low. Now the tech bulletin that came with this camshaft and lifters talks about break-in and it says that the break-in preparation says that you should be you should have lighter springs in the head with the uh, 110 to 120 pound seat load and 260 to 270 pounds open. So you shouldn't exceed 270 pounds open while you're breaking it in. And Engines from the factory, back in the day when these were built, rarely went over that. That is why engines from the factory had a super high success rate with a flat tappet cams, because the spring rate or the spring pressure rate pushing on the cam was so low. Now here is the cam card. You can see the part number 23-228-4. The gross lift 545-45 for both intake and exhaust. It has a 160 degree intake center line lobe separation 110 degrees. So here's where the difference is. This engine had trick flow heads on it and the trick flow heads have dual springs on it and the installed pressure on them is uh, 240 closed up to 600 open. So it's almost double of what it been from the factory. So the trick flow head or an aftermarket head where you have heavier springs on it for a higher performance head has a much higher spring force. So it is pushing the lifter against this camshaft a lot harder than it would have from compared to a factory head. That's why I said you got a 50-50 shot because that spring load is so high and it creates so much friction as, these are, as this is breaking in the time that it has to break in is considerably shorter than it would be at the factory. They didn't even break them in at the factory. You just put it in a car and drove it and it would break in. This is why aftermarket camshaft choice is, and looking at your head choice, you have to look at the spring for the head, what is recommended for the spring load on the camshaft to make sure when you're breaking it in, you might have to change all the springs on the head to make sure you don't exceed the spring seat force pushing the lifter against the lobe so you can break it in properly. Now this is what I would expect to see on a properly broken in lobe lifter. The lobe on the cam would be worn on the side so that the lifter still is rotating on the angle of the cam. 
And the lifter would have a nice even wear mark around the outside diameter indicating that it's riding on the edge of the cam and it's rotating in the lifter bore as the cam rotates. Now let's take a look at each camshaft lobe, see how it wore and compare it to the lifter that was riding on it. All right, so let's start at the front. Here's where the intermediate shaft drives the oil pump and the distributor. And we'll start with our first lobe here. Now this one. Uh, this one looks like it was rotating okay. We have some, some uh, wear on the one side where it would have been riding up. The, the lifter would have been lift, riding on this edge, rotating in there. Rotating in the bore, that one looks pretty good. This one also riding up on the edge. This one looks like this one was riding okay. This one, again, uh, riding up on the edge. We have somewhere you can tell it was riding on the edge. That one looks okay. This one. Now this one, um, this one also looks okay, but if you look really close, and it might be hard to see, I'll try and get the right light on this. You can see right in the middle here, right in the middle, there's a shiny spot. It is really, really small. I'll try and get a little light on there so you can see that. There's a shiny spot right there, which means this lifter was riding, something was making this ride a little hard. Let's take a look at that lifter that would be corresponding to this. This one here. And look at that, you can see this lifter, see that circle in the center? That means that there was, could be something in there, it could have been something stuck in there, could have been dirt, who knows, um, or just the way that it started to wear. But this particular lifter was riding in the center, so this, this is not good. You don't want to see that. That means there could be a flat spot right there on the end of the, on the lobe. So that's not a good one. Going down, let's take a look at the next set. This one looks like it was running okay, but there also is another flat spot there, which is hard to see. But there is a flat spot, which would be this lifter right here. Oh, there you go. There's another one, another circle in the center. So this one was riding, something was causing that to ride towards the center. So that was questionable. You don't want to see that. Next one down looks good. Riding on the edge here. Again, next one here. Riding on the edge looks all right. This one, riding all right. That one looks okay. Next one down. Now here's an interesting one. This particular lobe, you see how it's all shiny in the middle? All shiny in the middle means that this lifter was riding almost flat. Let's take a look at the lifter. Okay, so we got a circle on this one as well. So this one was riding flat. The crown is probably pretty close to being gone on this lifter. So this one is not uh, not perfect, but it's, it's not what you want to see. Next one down. This one looks all right. Riding all right on that one. This one not too bad a little pressure on the outside right there not a little pressure there and then the last few now here's an interesting one this one if you can see this right in the middle it's got a big wear oval indicating that as the lifter was rotating something was scratching it let's take a look at the lifter um and yeah, you can see something was rotating there. It was rotating flat. And that's not really what you want to see. It almost looks like, I looked under magnification, it almost looks like it would, would be starting to break through the heat treating there, which would not be good. This one, take a look at this one. This is almost the last one. See the big flat spot in the center? That is not good. So let's take a look at the lifter that was riding on this one. Take a look at the lifter. It does have a little mark in the center, so that was riding in the center. And the last one on the end here looks like it wore. That one wore okay. So out of all of the lobes and all of the lifters, we have five of them 
that have an incorrect or let's say a less than optimal wear pattern and they are exhaust intake so it's an intake exhaust exhaust intake intake so two intakes and exhaust exhaust intake intake exhaust exhaust and ex intake and exhaust so three intakes two exhaust pretty even across the board and they all exhibit the same pattern again starting with this one you can see try and get you can see the circle in the center there the little circle wear pattern indicating that it was wearing right towards the middle of the lifter so this one would be bad this one right here very similar get that you can see that that wear circle right in the middle that's not good that one goes right here this one again similar wear pattern circle in the center not optimal that one goes right there right here this one look at the circle on that one this one's got like a dot in the middle I'm not sure if you can see that dot I'll try and get the right angle so you can see that that one's got a dot in the middle and that's that, that's not gonna be good that's not good and finally this one a little bit different not as bad but it still has a circular wear pattern you can see on that so it's less than optimal so spread evenly throughout the engine if they were all on one end I would say it would be an oiling problem it wasn't getting enough oil if it were all on one side I would say that one side wasn't lubricating properly and it wasn't getting enough to wash away uh, any contaminants as the cam was breaking in but since it's pretty evenly distributed I'm going to say that the oil lubrication was even, uh, it was set up fine, the braking went okay, and just over time, these particular lifters wore towards the middle. And there's absolutely no way to tell why. Uh, I'd have to get these hardness tested and, and check all that stuff, but just from the visual inspection, while it broke in okay, and um, it ran fine, that's what happened to these lifters. One other thing I'd like to point out about the flat tappet is that you'll see around the lifter, you can see the wear mark. And as the lifter rotates in the bore, it leaves this mark on all the lifters. So you can see as it's rotating, as any dirt or contaminants get in the oil, as, it, as, it, as it's going through the bore, it leaves this wear mark, which causes, as this wears, causes drop in oil pressure because the oil is trying to go around the lifter. And as the lifter wears, you get more space. More space means a drop in oil pressure. Now the ultimate question. Could you reuse this camshaft? Sure, of course you could. You could put it back in. How long would it last? Impossible to tell. It could last years. It could last hours. It's really, it really difficult as to say. But I would say with the high spring forces and the trick flow heads, I would not reuse this cam because of that. Now I had a conversation with the owner and um, oddly enough, when we started building this engine, I asked why he chose to go with the flat tappet. And there is a cost involved. Um, it's about another grand or so, 1200 bucks to go with a roller, but you don't have this issue. And when you're planning your engine and you're choosing your components, and I've made a lot of videos about cam choices and all, all, all things uh, like heads and stuff like that, I always say make sure you're matching the components. When, you, when you're going to buy a camshaft, read the cam card to see what spring forces are required, what can it handle, and when you buy the head, make sure the springs are right for whatever you're setting it up. Uh, that is critically important and that's what happened with this particular setup is that the spring force is that up to maybe I think I think it's about 550 540 pounds out of the trick flow that spring force is what actually caused this to uh, wear prematurely like this even though we broke it in properly and did this reduced spring load it's still the, the springs are still too strong uh, so that's what happened here now I talk with the owner now that the cam is out and we're rebuilding the engine, we're going to go with a roller for the next build. It'll make it a lot easier. We won't have to worry about any of this, any break-in. It's pretty much just started up and go. So that's our flat tappet cam break-in analysis. Next, we'll do the uh, bearings and the piston rings answering that question, do rings rotate when you put them in a new engine? Thanks for stopping my pizza garage.